Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It's the Buff Geek here coming to you from a noisy high street in the Perth. Alpha Towers has got some construction going on around it today, which it quite often does during the day while the theatre gets finished off. And I'm going to need to apologise to the, about that straight out the bat, but there's no other time I can really do this, and I want to get it out there real soon. Also, I want to watch it. I just put on No Mercy, um, and I've just watched the first match, the opener, the uh, sorry, the opening um, uh, vignette, if you will. Totally sweet, really good. I like the fact they're building things up with the ladies. I've not been watching the product on a weekly basis. Mostly because they don't, well for two reasons, they don't put it on the network. And um, I've got a lot of films to review, man. Got a lot of films to review. Um, and I do feel there is a little bit too much content. Did catch the headbutt on Vinnie Mac though, that was pretty sweet. Nice one, KO and Vince. Vince is the best. You see Vince just like talking him up, getting him pumped for it. I'm sure they'll reference it on this show. But um, the, the, the Roman Reigns and John Cena stuff, really looking forward to that. Braun Strowman, Brock Lesnar, this for me is two matches that I really want to see. Um, the first match was Jason Jordan versus The Miz. And I'm not sure if Jason Jordan is getting booed everywhere else because this is The Miz's hometown. But there's just nothing terribly likeable about him. Uh, I know he's meant to be a face by the way that the announcers are talking, but I just don't buy it. I think they're better going with the Kurt Angle route that they started in 1999 where they make him a sickening baby face that you are meant to boo as opposed to whatever they're trying to do with him right now. I don't buy I don't buy the whole Sun storyline. I don't think he's comfortable in it. I don't think he's comfortable in his position. I don't think that he um, he's got no personality. A great wrestler, amazing physique, definitely a uh, Definitely a true athlete, like really explosive, really powerful, but he's just not, doesn't do anything for me when he screams and he pulls down the straps. It seems like now I'm going to demonstrate being angry. And if you're going to have to demonstrate it, then just don't do it, I think. You know, like if he's a quiet, timid sort of guy, if that's his personality, just make him the silent assassin. Maybe that's better. But when someone goes, when someone starts screaming and yelling and trying to act aggressive because they think that's what they're meant to do, it just comes across as flat. And and maybe a kid would buy it, but an adult certainly won't. There's just there doesn't seem to be any passion in the man. So when I saw this match was going on, I was like, ah, fuck this match. I'm not really that interested. But you know, it was a pretty decent match. There's pretty nice spots in it. Um, one of which was when the Miz corner Jason Jordan from either side, and Miz kind of jumps out with a drop kick through the middle ropes really nice way to distract the guy uh, the, the, the quote unquote baby face on the outside and there was a point when the uh, the fans started chanting about uh, who's your daddy that was it who's your daddy and you suck to Jason Jordan and it started getting really loud and it was when Miz was beating him down and you can see Miz like, lean over and say listen make a comeback you know and he punches Miz and then gives him a second right and then Miz like falls on his ass in a comedy style and that's Miz really trying to make himself look silly to make Jason Jordan look cool Miz is a fantastic heel um, he's he has that classic heel down in terms of being a coward but you know you can get the job done he's just managed to get it right uh, another person who was really good at it was, was Christian in, in recent memory the match was, it told a pretty reasonable story. I didn't like the interview at the end with Jason Jordan. I feel like he feels like Roman Reigns. Like Remember how the way Roman Reigns was written for and they were trying to push Roman Reigns uh, as like this, this baby face like John Cena? That's what it feels like. And now they're, obviously they still push Roman Reigns, but they just push him as, you know, he's, he's just... Uh, He's not a good guy, he's not a bad guy, he's just the guy, you know, they just they just have him come out and say something, whatever. But they're really trying to push Jason Jordan as this face, and it's just not working. That point at the end there, I mean, he said, you guys all chant, you suck lovingly at Kurt. Maybe maybe you should have called him your father. Um, well, you should have referenced the fact they were chanting, you suck during the match, not, oh, well, Miz, you really suck. Like, suffering suck boy, that was lame. 
anyway, regardless, the match was kept, was quite good. Uh, I'd be interested to know if Jason Jordan gets booed as heavily in other places or if it's just because he was against them. As I imagine that people feel the same way I do about it and just don't buy it, don't buy him in the spot. Um, he's just... <sighs> Gable has more personality, so for an intricate storyline like this, maybe he would be better suited, although obviously he's not... He doesn't look like Kurt and he's not built the same way, but you know, for someone to carry off this, they need they need the they don't just need to look like him and have the, the move set, but they need the character and that's something that is really suffering in wrestling right now. Is the there's 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 not as enough characters and they're trying, but it's not like it was. It's not like the eighties or the attitude era when the guys had their personalities on show and you were like well, you could buy into it because it was them, you know. If they were crazy, they were crazy. If they were a badass, they were a badass, you know. And even if they camped up a little bit with some silly gimmick, it worked. So uh, basically, I'm not a fan of Jason Jordan, but the match is just in terms of, of, of. Oh, I also don't like him doing the cross face because that needs to be someone that's super intense, uh, can 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 convey emotion in the face and in, in a non-comedic fa- uh, fashion and he just I just don't look at any intensity in his face it's also better as though, as though he's much uh, much more jacked than many guys in the roster I think it's better suited to someone that's got a lot of definition coming through even a leaner person so you can see all those muscles popping the way that Benoit had it um, so I'm not a fan of the fact that he uses the cross face I don't mind if he uses it on occasion but if that's one of his if that's his finisher I'm not going to roll with that because uh, like you give him Kurt Angle and you give him the cross face finisher like fucking hell how stacked can this guy be and he doesn't even seem like he's getting over in any way like the crowd is just bored he's confused doesn't know what he's doing doesn't seem to want to be there it's bad man I give the match I'll never watch it again I don't think but I'd give the match a 3 there's nothing terribly wrong with it you know, a couple of things, a couple of things that were pretty cool about it, but it's just it's, it was a pretty average match for all the effort Jason Jordan put in, and it just shows that Miz could Miz could have a, a four or a five match with someone with a lot less athletic efforts or a lot a lot less wrestling. So it's about the character and people being invested and in knowing when to do things, not just you know indie style popping moves all the time, but. I'm old school, you know. I like I like things to, I like a storyline. I like seeing the story in the ring, not just frantically throwing suplexes constantly. Um, especially when it seems like they've went. Kurt Angle used to do that, so you should do it. Anyway, let's get on to the next match, shall we? Well, goddamn, that got me pumped right there. I just saw the Asuka uh, vignette for TLC. She is possibly my new favorite thing um, between. You know, John Cena and Roman Reigns having their match tonight, and I'm really, I'm really quite a big fan of Roman Reigns. Brock and Braun, two of my guys. Brock for, you know, 20, uh, 20 years almost, 15 years I think it is. Um, Braun is like my new favourite guy, and Asuka is definitely my new favourite chick. Totally pumped for that. Just watched the, um, uh, the Bray Wyatt Finn Balor match, and... As you all know, or, or maybe you don't, I'm not super into Finn Balor. Um, I just don't think that he's very good at promos. I don't dig his personality. I think the demon looks hokey. So I was quite glad when Bray kind of baited him into, you know, you brought your you brought a weapon to a man or an on-man fight last time. Let's see what you can do just being Finn Balor. And I liked how Finn said that he created the demon. So who really is the worst of the two? If that's his creation, it's not the demon seeping out of him. He made the demon as a focus. So that's quite an interesting way to word it. Um, Bray looks to have put on a little bit of weight again, uh, which didn't seem to hamper his uh, his ability in the ring at all, actually. He's just he's got amazing cardio for such a big man. Finn's wearing this bluey, silvery, horrible outfit. I like him in the black. As much as I made fun of him having like the the T Birds jacket and all, I didn't like the blue either. Uh, the 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 jump start was pretty cool, although it kind of shits on Bray because he can't beat him as a demon, and then he jump starts him, 
and then Finn comes back. You kind of think that maybe Bray should have got the win for this one, but Finn beat him again, so is Finn Balor just definitely better than Bray in every single situation, even if he gets beat up at the start? And uh, was he put through a table? He was certainly slammed on a table. I can't remember if he was put through the table. I don't think I don't think I broke. Um, some really nice, nice uh, exchanges in the match. I liked the little nod to Finlay. I think that's a quality thing. I, I'm not sure if um, they've always got a ring skirt there or not. Now I was pretty sure that it was always the, the um, the, the sort of large monitor, that going along the bottom of the ring. But maybe that's just on the hard camera side and not on all the sides, which probably makes more sense. But I don't feel like I've seen a ring skirt in ages. But maybe, maybe I have. I just, I've just not noticed. Anyway, it's pretty cool spots. Um, I liked when Bray was just suplexing him across the ring. Bray and Finn together really works. It makes Bray look massive, but it also makes you realize how small Finn is. Bray is, Bray's like six two, six three. Obviously a big guy, but that's like the average main eventer height. Goldberg, Brock, Steve Austin, The Rock, Brock Lesnar, Triple H. You know, all those guys are about 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 Roman Reigns, John Cena, give or take an inch or, or so. And that means Finn would look tiny beside them as well. And I just don't buy that he's the same as Daniel Bryan. That... Daniel Bryan could be small, and I believe Daniel Bryan could conceivably beat anyone, especially because the fans are so into him and because his personality is fantastic. I just don't buy Finn, and I don't buy his... Uh, I don't buy, buy the coup de grace being that devastating a finisher. Anyway, again, a really great match from these guys. I think the wrong person won. Based on the match itself, i definitely give it a four. If I was thinking about who I who I would prefer to win, and maybe taking out the jump start, like it would be fine to have the jump start without but having the match actually start, because I feel it just devalued Bray too much. It would maybe push it to a three and a half, but I think I'm going to go with a four for this. Obviously, I want to hear what you guys uh, what you guys think about these matches. Um, let us know your scores. I'm kind of firing through this pretty fast because it is a three-hour pay-per-view and I'm watching BVS, Batman vs. Superman tonight for our DCEU, uh, DCEU uh, movie review series, which is actually you know only four films long instead of 15, I think, by the time we got to Spider-Man with the MCU stuff. So if you're not... If you're not sure what I'm talking about or if you've not listened to it yet, go back and check out our Man of Steel review. Um, it's a good banner, there's three of us, there's me, there's David, and there's hashtag it's Steve. Really good fun, um, and I'm about to watch the next match. So far, No Mercy has had two decent matches and a nice little promo with uh, Asuka. I still think they should change the spelling of her name, because when you read it, it, it says Asuka to me, and I always thought she was called Asuka. Um, and also, going back to the, uh, Vince McMahon and Kevin Owens, as soon as I press play, there was a, a promo for Hell in the Cell and KO just headbutts Vince and I like the way that, you know, KO's shaking his hand and you can see that Vince is like, right, you're gonna do it you're gonna do it, you're gonna bust me open bust me open, come on, do it do it, do it, and he's really pumping him up before that happens, you can see KO's like, okay, okay, okay fuck, 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 gonna headbutt the boss, it needs to be hard enough that, like it looks good, but not too hard that I fucking kill him. Oh, shit, 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 shit. Boom! And, you know, Vince dropped, and it was just fantastic. Vince is looking really healthy. Um, there was a couple of times in recent memory where I didn't think he was looking as healthy as he had done on TV, but he's looking, f like, looking a bit, uh, like he's got a bit more weight on him. He's looking fuller in the face. He's looking a better colour. Um, <clears throat> and still rocking the classic Vince McMahon hair, which you cannot beat. So, yeah. Pumped for that. I'm not sure if I'm that excited about KO versus Shane. Can Shane really lose a third match in a row? Mm, but KO definitely needs the win. So, hmm. <clears throat> and going back to Bray, Bray for me is basically a jobber. He's a jobber to the stars. He's like, <clears throat> excuse me, he's like how Kane used to be for ages. Like, I can't really get into Bray because I know he's going to lose, and that's the problem. Someone needs to 
just they need to decide what they're doing with him they need to push him correctly and give him a real run and I think he was safer on Smackdown actually as opposed to being moved to Raw I think that's um, that only means he's going to lose to more top stars maybe they're doing it so that they can have him against Braun but he's not beating Braun Strowman either so I don't know I think it was a bad move to, to switch him up from Smackdown to Raw he was safer on Smackdown he could have got a couple of cheeky wins there maybe not though anyway let's watch the next match shall we what a fantastic match I just watched the Sheamus and Cesaro the bar versus Seth and Dean I'm watching some of the replays right now while I'm talking to you with the sound down because I don't want YouTube to get upset oh yeah that was a bad one so Cesaro lost a tooth maybe a couple of teeth and bust open his lip for sure when he took oh oh, oh this is this, this sorry 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 this is a sick bit where they go for the the white noise and powerbomb spot I'm just going to watch it again oh if Dean could have just struggled a little bit that Sheamus hit the white noise Big heaving powerbomb from Cesaro. That should have been the three count there. That should have been the three count. Oh my gosh. Yeah, Cesaro lost tooth. Oh, here's the replay for the finish as well. Great finish. Oh my gosh. So good. Sheamus kicks out of Dirty Deeds. Eats a knee from Seth. Dirty Deeds from Dean. It's good, but it's, it's not that powerbomb spot, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, when Cesaro got, um, what's the word, I can't remember what it's called now, but when he got th thrown into the the ring post, he went over the ring post and he did the, you know, hit, hit your face off the, off the, sorry, off the ring post as opposed to the turnbuckle hit his face off the ring post, and but he obviously actually hit his face off it instead of slapping it or protecting his face with his hand and he bust his face open, you can see he was pissed. There's a, a couple of times in this match where I wasn't sure if the ref, if someone was injured. Like I thought maybe it, Dean had injured his arm because the ref was really checking him and kept pushing uh, Cesaro back. He wasn't letting C Cesaro get into the match there. Um, so I think there was a little bit of confusion there. I think the ref maybe thought Dean was actually hurt and was meant to check on him and he was really like throwing his authority around. I kind of thought the ref was going to play into the finish of the match because there was a few times when the ref had to be in the, the bar's face. So I don't know if that was planned or not, and that's what's fantastic because I don't know if what was definitely real, what was shoot and what was work, and that's always good in a match. And I've been watching wrestling for a long time and wrestled plenty of matches, so if they can have me questioning it, I mean, it probably all was planned out. It, did, it just looked a little bit more messy, so you've got to decide it wasn't messy because of the planning and they planned it that way or was it messy because it actually the ref was legit worried about Dean and then he was obviously worried about uh, Cesaro later on but what a, what a match um, I mean apart from a couple of hiccups maybe near the start um, with the, the, the mouth spot and the kind of this the unsmoothness of the ref they've built it so well the bar are fantastic in terms of being a tag team great banter although their backstage skit wasn't the best because they kind of did it like they were faces and they might be badass heels and I think they're sort of tweeners now but it just seemed a little bit comedic with the, um, I don't know what the girl's name is, the girl holding the mic, she was just kind of smiling at them and she should be kind of either in awe or intimidated or whatever, I kind of would have liked her, liked her to not be just grinning like a Cheshire cat at them. Um, like I said, that powerbomb spot at the end was phenomenal. I just wish Dean had struggled a little bit, just just wiggled a little, wiggle and wriggle, and Seamus just squeezed him, because it seemed like Seamus was holding on to Dean for an age, but I think they were both watching it like, is this going to happen, this looks amazing, a little wriggle for Dean would have made that a perfect, perfect um, little spot, um, I mean the fact that Cesaro could deadlift Seth when he's standing on the ropes so that means that's all core it's not like he can lean back against that because he'd fall off the ropes it's all core and upper body Cesaro is the man Cesaro's the guy that should be getting the push 
that Jason Jordan's getting. My like where Cesaro and Sheamus are right now, and I hope that Cesaro gets his shot next year. Cesaro can do anything. Like Jason Jordan has got all the suplexes and the, and the athleticism and whatever the physique, and you know they've given him the cross face, I think, and then you see Cesaro do it tonight, and that's how you do it. That's someone muscular, ripped, k- kind of lean, um, but you can see the intensity. It looks good from him. It looks strong from him. It's believable. He should be the one that has the the, the cross face. And actually, I think if they were to make his finisher the cross face from now on, and make the the Cesaro swing like kind of like your signature pop move, but if he was to do the cross face as his finisher, that would be a really good choice. And I think they could use that as that's the the the, the X factor that he's needed. He's got this new devastating move because he can do. Everything that Jason Jordan can do, he's he can do the stomps like Finn Balor. He can do the six one nine like Namus. Like literally, Cesaro can do anything. I think it's good that he's with Sheamus because he kind of gets Sheamus helps bring out his banter. Um, I would like the WWE to use Sheamus and Cesaro as kind of Eddie and Chris or you know members of DX like Sean and Trips or whatever, and just always have them be kind of friends from now on, helping each other out. Even when they're not on a tag team, they can still be pals. Because, um, you know, back in the day, wrestlers used to have friendships that would last for years and years and years, and they wouldn't um, necessarily have to feud over a belt or be a tag team. They could, you could be friends with someone and not be in a tag team or a stable. And I think that's, or wear the same clothes, and I think that's what they should do with them. Um, I would, if I was booking it, I would take uh, Cesaro, push him with his new finish, and push him all the way to a title. I'm not sure on Raw or SmackDown. Maybe on SmackDown, have him be the guy that beats Gender. I think the fans would pop for that. It's uh, another new guy beating him as opposed to going back to one of the old guard uh, after Gender's beaten every established main event. So, babyface there is. I think that would really work. And um, it'd be a nice little arc for Gender as a heel to finally be taken down by Cesaro as opposed to like a guy, another guy coming to get his first title as opposed to you know, just Randy Orton taking it or whatever. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm always happy for, like, Taker to come back just randomly and choke slam and boom, that's it. But this would be a good way to, that you could get a really quality match out of them as well and keep, uh, keep elevate a new guy and get Jinder to stay strong. But anyway, that's my fantasy booking as usual. I'm sure you guys are doing the same. Can't believe I said that someone else should do the crossface and then Cesaro does it. I mean, this looks really good from him. Um... And then they had this, the Cesaro swing at the start, hitting um, Dean's shoulder against the ring steps. That just looked gnarly. Um, I liked that Seth wasn't super focused on in this match. Um, sometimes they've got a habit of highlighting Seth in some tag team matches and having him do too much. I like the fact that they had the bar do all the work because they are chasing the titles. That made a lot of sense to me for this dynamic. Um, just a great match great match, all top workers all like some people say to me the wrestling's crap now or it's not been good since the Attitude Era or whatever, I think that's just a thing to say Um, there's always good things in it Um, I think actually the WWE is really good right now, especially Raw um, with a lot of things that they're trying to do there's loads of, there's loads of good stars, but then there's lots of ones like Jason Jordan who are just flat, so they still have that, it's almost like this mixture between it, it could almost be the Attitude Era, but then it could also be 2007, when for me there was only a few good things, Taker being around, Edge being the fucking man, so I think it's, there's this like this, this nice transition, I like the fact they didn't stop it for blood, um, but these four guys would have would have been great in the Attitude Era as well, they would have, they're great now, they their personality shine through. I mean, Dean Ambrose's work rate isn't amazing. I don't, I don't, I don't think his wrestling style looks is that great. Um, he's not a terribly technical wrestler. He's not terribly athletic. He's got a good personality, good character, got a good engine. He can go. Uh, he's got great banter, and I, I totally buy him. You know. Um, the more I watch him, the more I think him and Mick Foley could have had a fantastic match back in the day. And there's you know there's still time. I mean Jerry Lawler and Terry Funk just wrestled a match this past weekend, I believe, and they're both advanced in their years, let's say. 
So there's always time for Mick to have one last shot. I would never be upset if Mick came back for a run on SmackDown. If you go back and watch a little bit of uh, 96 onwards on the old WWF um, Raws and, and pay-per-views up to about 2001, Mick Foley is heavily focused and he's just quality all the way. This match here, like I said, is probably a four and a half, maybe more, best match of the night so far, and No Mercy has turned into a really good pay-per-view. Apart from that, Jason Jordan's a bum. I mean, his wrestling is good, so the match was good. It's a great show so far. I'm really excited. Uh, let's see what else they got for us, shall we? Well, that was a pretty sweet match from the ladies there. It was a fatal five-way. I'm not quite sure why Emma was added. Um... It seemed, I'm not sure if this town is a heel town, but uh, Bailey came out and she's making her kind of return to pay-per-view. She made a return to Raw recently. Mm, not the best response. Some cheers, some boos. Uh, Emma came out, boos, but she's a heel, so that's fine. Maybe a little bit tepid, but she has kind of been thrown in there. Obviously, they want to build on her a little bit. Uh, Sasha Banks came out and got a good few boos as well. Nia Jax came out. And she got some good cheers, even though she's meant to be a heel. And then the star of the show, Alexa Bless, the super heel, got all the cheers. So kind of seemed like your heel and your tweener and Nia Jax were the most over. And I think people are a little bit sick of Bailey and Sasha. I've always thought that Sasha's a more natural heel. And Bailey's kind of gimmick just doesn't really vibe for me so much. Although she's growing on me a little bit more. She's, she wasn't botchy in this one. Um, the only botchiness that took place was between Emma and Sasha Banks. It just looked a little bit messy when... Uh, I want to say it was a satellite bulldog. Or is it wheelbarrow bulldog? I can't remember. It was a satellite DT. But there was a little exchange between Sasha Banks and Emma that went... It just looked a little bit messy and it looked like Sasha was doing most of the work there. Apart from that... A uh, really good match. They used Nye in the right way. They kept her strong but managed to get her out of the match. That powerbomb was terrible in the fact that it looked amazing but like terrible. Like It looked devastating. It was terrible in the good way. Like holy shit. That was a sore bump to be taking. Uh, it's uh, Nia Jax going through, through the, the middle rope near the end and going into the post. Really good way to take her out of the match. And I'm glad they didn't hot potato the title again and put it on Alexa Bliss for a little while. I just thought they were going to put it on Emma and just be like, oh, there's another champion, you know. And they can build something around her and then they move everyone else's storylines off and they've got storylines and they've got a title build. But I'm glad they didn't just slam the title on Emma there. And I'm kind of thinking it's the right not to give it to Nia Jax. I, I'm, looking for her to, I'm looking for Alexa Bliss to hold this title for a lot longer. Um, I'm also hoping that in post-production that I can take out some of these sounds from the outside but this is what happens when you record during the day on a time-sensitive thing such as this because I want to get it out there so sorry folks um, there's not really time to be messing around with uh, trying to do it again because the damn show is three hours long you know what I'm saying uh, yeah it was, a, it was a good match I'm enjoying the women's stuff for sure and there's a lot of good characters there I'll probably give it a Three, three and a half. I think I enjoyed it more than Jason Jordan and The Miz, but that's probably just because Jason Jordan's involved and I feel like he sucks the fun out of a room. So maybe give it a three and a half so far. The the show has got a three, three and a half, four, and a four and a half. Uh, so the bar are doing the best, and we're about to come up to the Roman Reigns John Cena match. But before we talk about that, during the kind of uh, Mountain Dew sponsorship of No Mercy, I've been skipping that, but I, I didn't skip it on this one, and then I saw they having like memories from different No Mercies, so that was, I feel a little bit annoyed now that I didn't just sit and watch all the way through it, and it was quite nice seeing Eddie and Batista go at it from 2005, that was, no, 2007 it would have been, is that right? Is that right? I thought it said 2005 on the graphic, but actually I'm pretty sure it would be 2006 or 7, let me just double check that, that, I do remember that match being fantastic. And, oh, I can't check it because uh, I'll get spoilers. Oh, shit. Anyway, you guys can tell me how wrong I am. I feel like Benoit was 2007, so Eddie was 2006. It must be No Mercy 2006, I think. Um, that was a great match. Eddie was brilliant. Batista is an underrated worker. 
go and watch that match. It was hella fun. Personally, I was pulling for Eddie, but I always kind of pull for Eddie. Anyway, let's do John Cena, Roman Reigns, the freaking Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, rock of this generation. I don't know why it's happening at No Mercy, why it's happening right now, but it is. So, oh, looking forward to the promos as well. Let's do it. Well, well, well. If that match didn't just suck, Roman Reigns and Cena, massive letdown. Like, Cena selling for death with Roman Reigns' punches at the start for what seemed like forever. It's goofy fucking face. Roman acting the hard man the whole time. And then just finisher, finisher, finisher. No investment, no story, no nothing, just laziness. And that cover at the end from Roman Reigns it's like the laziest cover you could ever have done. Really disappointed in that match. Couple of cool spots. I'll give it like a one because it fucking sucked. In fact, I feel like I want to give it a zero because these guys should be able to do better and really didn't seem to put in much effort at all. Roll on something else. Well, just finished the pay-per-view. I'm sorry if there's been a couple of changes in sound quality but um, I've had to change rooms when I've been uh, speaking to you guys um, I skipped Enzo and Neville because I was pissed off with John Cena and Roman Reigns and uh, well Enzo's the champ now of the Cruiserweights I don't really care I don't watch the Cruiserweight division so I'm not really that interested in that excuse me also Enzo's really annoying um I did see Neville looking confused, so he must have got a lucky win. But the thing is, when you watch when you watch the network on the Xbox, it's not the easiest to rewind fast forward. Sometimes it cuts out quite a lot. Or at least I have this problem, so uh, I wasn't going to rewind it and, and watch it again. And I kind of basically I pressed fast forward and it skipped a good portion of the match. I just thought, screw it, I'll just miss it out. So uh, yeah, I can't rate that match. And then we got to Brock and Braun, which is the big one for me. And you know they did a good job of selling Braun Strowman as the new Brock Lesnar. It makes sense in a lot of ways. You know Brock Lesnar was this unstoppable monster. He had no peers. No one could beat him. He looked different. He looked freakish. He looked huge. He was just crushing people. Braun Strowman was kind of it's kind of the same. And uh, they got together in the ring, and I don't know. There was just no magic. It just fell apart. Uh, there, there was no table spots. There was no, there was no big suplexes. There was no, there was nothing we hadn't seen. There was less than what we'd seen out the two of them before. And I, I kind, I don't know. Maybe, maybe Brock isn't the best at leading a match for someone like Braun. I, I don't like seeing Brock being in trouble. I like seeing Brock being a dominating monster. Um, and I kind of thought that. Like Braun was a really good wrestler based on the fact that he had some amazing matches with Roman Reigns. But maybe he's just not as good. I presume that Braun and John Cena will go next and then John Cena will be t taxing that ass and taking that win. Um, no, this match just didn't have it. And I was all for Braun maybe becoming champion and as I watched the match, as it opened in the first minute or so, I thought, no, this is not right. It's not right. And they hope they don't t put the title on him because... Samoa Joe and Brock had something, and that, that kind of worked a little bit better. Um, speaking of Samoa Joe, I don't know where he is. I don't think he's injured. I don't know why he's not on the fucking show. Maybe may because I'm not be watching the product. Um, but I, I, I feel when I watch Raw and SmackDown every week, I kind of guess exactly who's going to win for the pay-per-views, so I kind of like going to the pay-per-views with less knowledge. But... It was a pretty lackluster match, actually. Pretty shit. And um, there was something really weird that happened. Like, Braun is slamming Brock into the turnbuckle when he's got the when Brock's got the Kimura on him. And they're in the ropes. So he's touching the ropes. And he's leaning against the ropes and the ref doesn't break it. But then when he drops to the floor and reaches for the rope, there's a, there's a rope break. So that made no sense. The crowd was flat for it. Um, pretty shitty match. I'm going to give it a 2. I tabulated all five of the matches that I watched. I know I only watched five matches. And at a score of five, it does give the event a 2.7, so not quite there. I know the John Cena one probably hurt. I mean, 
could it have got a one maybe but those guys those guys should have known better there's higher expectations and they just put on a shit performance so I don't know what started off as a really good pay-per-view kind of went the way of WCW pay-per-views where the main events were a little bit shoddy and also I'm not going to watch the match between the main events sometimes because I just know that Enzo uh, Neville won as a throwaway like well, whatever, Neville get the title back soon enough, you know, and then that justifies Enzo's move down there, and maybe they do it for a few months, I don't know, but who cares, no one watches 205 Live anyway, because Finel Midgets, ha <laughs> um, So I, I thought I'd do it this way, instead of um, taking notes and talking about the show in a whole, and looking back on it, I was, I've decided to watch each match and talk about it straight afterwards, so I'm kind of probably, I don't know, I feel like uh, I've been quite pumped and quite fast paced talking about it hopefully you like this style, I'd love to know which style you like best, do you like the long form, just like watching the whole show and talking about it, it means it can't go on YouTube but that's okay, if you guys like that, we can do that and just talk talk shit through the whole show either myself or with someone probably not as good with just myself but, you know, I talked about Buffy for two hours myself so I could probably talk about a, a show myself, uh, a wrestling show Um. Or do you prefer this way, or do you prefer me just to record the whole thing in a one-hour? Because I'm not sure if you can even tell that there's breaks in the audio between each match, but but there certainly was. So I'm always looking for feedback. Depending on what you guys want, I will do it uh, to the best of my ability. Like I said, watching BVS tonight, so we're going to be reviewing that on Thursday, uh, which will drop Thursday night or Friday, which... Um, Friday morning. We're also going to talk about our MCM Comic Con experience, see who we met, some funny stories, a whole bunch of stuff. We've already got the itinerary laid out. There'll be some movie news this week, I think. Um, and I'm going to try and squeeze out Buffy Season 3 in the next couple of days. So it means I'm totally up to date because I've just started Season 4 and I can just vibe with that. So a lot of content to get through this week to get uh, brought up to speed. Then next week we've got Blade Runner. I'd really like to be able to see that and, and podcast it. But, I mean, it's all it's all time dependent. The one thing you can definitely rely on is the DCU uh, movie review series, which uh, our review series have been really popular. Um, but like I said, any feedback um, is always appreciated. Maybe with something that you guys want to hear. Maybe you want more Star Wars theories. Just let us know. I want to thank Alpha Fitness for sponsoring each and every one of these podcasts. You can contact them on the Buffkeep Podcast blog and um, that's where you'll find all the podcasts. You'll find various um, various articles and pieces of news about movies and fan theories and this and that. Um, that's our website, folks. And if you want to find anything to do with the Buffkeep, just type it in on all social media, any social media platform, and you're going to find it there. Um, I gotta get to the gym and work out. I'm gonna go hit back. I'm kinda pissed off because the John Cena match sucked, the Brock Lesnar Braun Strowman match sucked. And uh Yeah. A little bit pissed. And I had a monster, and I don't have those too often, but I'm feeling pretty jacked from that, so I'm gonna go lift some weights and Sorry about busting your ears there. Um I'll catch you soon. Much love. Hashtag the Buff Geek Podcast. You both suck. You both suck. You both suck. You both suck.